Hallelujah, hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah, everybody. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The devil is alive. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise him. Shake it off. Come on, come on, come on. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Anybody got a praise in your mouth today? Anybody got a praise in your mouth today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is good. He is good. Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah, his mercy endures forever. Father, we bless you today. We honor you today, oh God. Today, God, we say thank you. Right now, we say thank you. We felt you move in a mighty way. We saw you today in a mighty way. We felt you today in a mighty way. And God, we say thank you. Now, God, as your children are gathered together in this house to celebrate you, oh God, to celebrate you, oh God, for the great things you have done, for your mercy endures forever. We thank you. We honor you. Now, God, have your way. Have your way. We stand as empty vessels to you, oh God. We stand as empty vessels to you, oh God. Fill us up, oh God. Fill us, oh God. God, we pray for the word that's going to come forth tonight, oh God. Encourage us, strengthen us, oh God. Remind us, oh God. If it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We bless you. We honor you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God your best praise. Come on, give God your best praise. Come on, give God your best praise. Hallelujah. 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 
Put your hands together. How many of you know he is great Jehovah God? How many of you know he is great Jehovah God? He is great Jehovah. He is a great Jehovah. Come on, put them together right there. Come on, help us say. Say great, great Jehovah God. Say great, great Jehovah God. Great, great Jehovah God. Jehovah, Jehovah. Say great, great Jehovah God. Say great, great Jehovah God. Great Jehovah God. Jehovah, come on. Jehovah, great, great Jehovah God. Say great, great Jehovah God. Great Jehovah God. Jehovah. Great Jehovah, Great Jehovah is our God. Is our God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's the Alpha and Omega, Holy One. Come on, Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah is our King. Is our King. He is the ruler. He's the ruler and creator of all things. Come on, we say, we say, Great Jehovah, Great Jehovah. say Great. Great Come on, he is. He's the Lord. God who reigns. God who reigns. He is the hope. He's the ruler and creator of all things. We say, great Jehovah God. Say, pray. Great Jehovah God. Say, pray. Great Jehovah God. Again, he is the Lord God. He is the Lord God most high. He is the everlasting Father that should die. Yeah, he is. He is the Lord God who reigns. God who reigns. He is the hope. He is the hope of every day. Let's take it up. Let's take it up. He's great. 
Ah. Uh-huh. 
and for keeping me this far. You've been good to me, and I do worship. Thank you. 
you are oh, Jesus. and for keeping me this far oh, how I you've been good to me good to me and I do worship thee oh just for who for who you are Keeping me, keeping me this far. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. Yes, you have. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. God, you've been good to me. To me, yes, you have. You've been good to me. to me God you're good you've been good come on if God's been good to you lift your hands in the sanctuary come on now while she sings this he's been good to me I want you to sing with her come on you've been good to me come on tell him and I do worship thee the Bible says that we ought to bless the Lord. It comes from a word, eulogio, is where we get the word eulogize. It means to speak well of Him. And I do worship thee. Come on, speak well of Him. Speak of His goodness. David said from the same premise, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side? Just remember those moments that he was on your side. Think about if it had not been for the Lord. All of us have those moments if it had not been for the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord. Come on, 10 years ago. Come on, you remember five years ago. You've got to remember two years ago. How many of you have the testimony last year at this time if it had not been for God on your side? Last month. Yesterday. A few hours ago if it had not been for the Lord. How many of you know that you'd have made some other decisions if God had not intervened on your behalf, interrupted your plans, but God did what he wanted to do? Now come on, give God some praise right there. He is worthy. Come on, come on, clap like you mean it. We are thankful. We are thankful. We are excited. We appreciate God, and we know that God is good. I want you to hug two or three people, especially if you don't know them. I've got some Liberty House family here from the DMV. While she's playing, just hug two or three people across the aisle and tell them that you love them. Amen. And that you're glad that God is on their side. You're glad that God is moving by his spirit. You're glad that God did something fresh in their lives, that they're anointed beyond measure. That God is blessing them, opening doors for them. He's healing them. Come on, prophesy to them and tell them the best is yet to come. God has a plan. Something phenomenal is about to take place in their life tonight. Let them know that the word of God is getting ready to destroy some yoke and remove some burden tonight. That your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. 
I am honored tonight. If you've been here for the last three nights and you've been blessed, come on, give God some praise. If you've been around this word, Lord have mercy. We have been absolutely blessed this week. It has been a great time. You may have your seats. This has been a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. And uh, I'm excited about what God is doing in the people of God and the man of God. Amen. For every household, every place of occupation, every place of recreation, we see the men of God are shifting. Amen. Amen. And if you are not from D.C., Baltimore, or Virginia, you are not from there, can you put your hands together for the DMV folk that drove all the way up here? to be with their man of God, to be here with us at this conference. We are thankful and excited. Hey Amen. We was kind of hoping they got here last night early, so we throw this food we had on them. Hey Amen. And, uh, but we are so thankful for their safe arrival. It's awesome. And um, the people that kind of make it happen for me when I go to the DMV area. I'm thankful for all the men of God that surround pastor that are there for me. But a couple of ladies, Lisa, you guys met Lisa, but Miss Kia is here and we're thankful for you. Amen. Come on Potter's house. She makes sure that your pastor's okay when he comes in town. There's no needs there. Nothing going on that I'm missing. If I need something, she'll make sure that we get it. And I'm thankful for you. We appreciate your gift to the man of God, but to the body of Christ. Amen. I'm not your man of God, but you treat me as the man of God when I come. And we're thankful for you and your husband and for allowing you to serve that way. And uh, we appreciate that, man. I want to say that publicly. And a lot of times those people behind the scenes that make it happen get no recognition. Amen. And so I want to say thank God for you. And I appreciate you. And um, in her absence, we thank God for Lady Olds when I'm in D.C. She gets up in the morning. That's right. She's awesome. She's awesome. Amen. And uh, Pastor O's wife, your wife is awesome. She woke up, wake up in the morning and cook breakfast like I helped pay rent. Amen. And I ate too. I ate good. I know she said, this Negro don't pay no rent around here. Eating like that, making sandwiches late at night. And so just making sure I was comfortable and uh, I'm thankful, man. I appreciate it because folk don't have to treat you like that because I know I don't deserve it. Amen. And so I'm thankful to God for what he does and who he uses. But this is, this is my friend. This is my brother in Covenant Fellowship. He is a son of Bishop Von Monroe McLaughlin. And so we are of kindred spirit. We're of one heart. Uh, I believe we are the men on the outside of the tent. Where God said, I'm going to put your spirit into them. And I believe we have the spirit of the same man of God. And so we are responsive to the same voice. Amen. That speaks into my life. I tell the people here that when he speaks, it's, it's like spiritual sperm for my spirit man. It gets me pregnant when he talks into our lives. And so I'm thankful to see other men and to hang with other men that have that same effect that when they leave his presence they're pregnant with something and uh, it's not just moments of clashing together but it's intimate moments so we love the same man of God isn't that, isn't that good to say and ain't nothing freaky and funny about it that me and Pastor Olds love the same man we in love with the same man and, and ultimately it's Jesus and yet in the earth uh, we got a spiritual father but this is a powerful man of God in the DMV area Liberty House International Ministries, just a fantastic preacher. Uh, you're going to hear him. Amen. Pontificator of the gospel. Amen. A learned man. Amen. We're thankful. He's looking at me like I'm crazy, but he's a trained preacher. Amen. How many of you know it's good to be trained? Amen. They called me the gangster bishop because I, I wasn't trained. I just... I just came out the womb hollering at folk, amen, and love the Lord. And so I don't know nothing about all that stuff he knows. A homiletician. And so we thank God for you. 
And, uh, but the words you're going to hear tonight is coming from this prophet. He is the man of God. I'm going to let him introduce his, uh, his friends, his family, his sons and daughters. And I think they have something special for us. And uh, I'm thankful, man, that you would come and just share with me um, and, and, and try to put a cap to what's taking place already. Uh, how many of you had a good time last night with Pastor Brown? Amen. So we're thankful. We're thankful. Um, before I met him, I told you guys there would never be another assistant pastor at this church. Amen. But Pastor Robert A. Brown is the assistant pastor of the Potter's House. I'm the assistant pastor of Builders of the Faith. And we have made covenant that if something happens to either one of us, that one of us is on a plane immediately under the auspices and the submission of Bishop Von Monroe McLaughlin. And whatever we need to do, and however long we need to stay, that we'll make sure that the house is covered. Amen. Until they're back in the saddle. Isn't that good news? That Uncle Brown will make sure we all right if something happens to me. And uh, he will get with our elders and make sure things are in place, but just as the man of God. And so I'm thankful for that. I, I, I want to thank all the men. Is there some ladies in here that can thank God for the men that have been coming this week? I'm taking this time now just because I won't get it at the end. For the men that have come this week, I thank God for them. And uh, pressing, working. And we've been here for three nights and I'm thankful. I thank God for my elders. Amen. I see you. I, I know uh, Elder Moss and Elder Butler, you guys just been here, and I thank God for you. And Elder Ron, he's done, done a little bit of everything. He done sang, done played with the music, played the drums. Amen. And so we're thankful for you guys, all the men that have come. I know your lives are going to be changed. Don't forget tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, we got a brunch. It's men only, and uh, we're looking forward for a blessed time. Amen. So, Father, touch us tonight. Move by your spirit. Keep us after this word has been sown into our hearts. Don't let it get picked up by ravens and fowls of the air. Let our hearts not be stony tonight. And God, when we leave this place full of joy, don't let it be temporary. Let it be the joy of the Lord so that the cares of this world would not snuff out, strangle, and keep back all the blessings that you have in store for us that it would not suffocate your word, that it would saturate in our hearts and it would be everlasting. And so God, we thank you. And so God, after this mind, we are thankful that the next voice that we will hear will be none other than your son, your created man, your fresh vessel, that of Pastor Vance Olds. And so we're grateful, God, for what you've done in this life. We're grateful for the journey. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together.
that saw this house in her first glory. You got to be some old folk because understand it was 70 years ago. But if there's anybody here that's left that saw this house in her first glory, I want to know how do you see it now? He didn't even wait for them to answer. He said, I know that when you look at the new house, it don't look like anything in comparison. But God said, I want you to know that I'm going to rebuild. And the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. But when I said that, I skipped several verses. God said some things that's going to cause the latter house to be glorious. First of all, in verse 8, he said, don't worry about the money because the silver is mine. The gold is mine also. And God said also there's going to be a shake up. I'm going to shake the heavens. I'm going to shake the earth. And after I get through shaking, things that are upside down are going to be turned right side up. Things that are inside out are going to be turned outside out and inside in. And after the shake up, the glory is coming back. Reach over and tell somebody, neighbor, don't worry about the shake up in the church. Don't worry when it looked like things are being shaken to pieces. God said, I got to shake it up before I bring the glory back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Amen. Come on, grab somebody. Tell them, my greater is coming. Come on, grab them. Tell them, my greater is coming. Hallelujah. God is shaking, and he is doing some shaking in us, and, and by us, and through us, to make us who he wants to make us. Let's just put your hands together and just give God a crazy praise just for for being for being who he is he's an you may be seated he's an absolutely phenomenal God and we are so excited and privileged to be in the house of God I'm so absolutely trying to settle um, what's going on in my spirit I know the Lord wants to say something prophetically and I know God is, is up to something how many know that God is up to something on the subject something and I believe that God is going to do something absolutely phenomenal tonight we, we, we don't come to inspect we come to expect and I expect God I come with anticipation I expect God to blow our minds tonight I made up in my mind when I came here tonight that I was going to give God my best praise because I need God to give me his best blessing now if you're not shame I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ought to shout like you're out of what you're in. You still missed it. Let me gra grab your other neighbor and say, neighbor, you ought to shout like you're out of what you're in. Pastor Brown said something last night that blew my mind. Glory to God. He said, listen, you, um, I, I forgot exactly what it was, but it blew my mind. He said, your, 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 your praise ought to be Say it again. You ought to praise God equivalent to the hell that you're catching. See, my people shout right off of that in a minute. You, if you're catching any hell right now in your life, you ought to give God praise 
because you know what's going to happen after you come out and you ought to praise God like you're out already because that's called express faith I don't have to wait till I get out I'm going to give God praise before I come out look at your neighbor and say don't wait till the battle is over shout right now because if you shout right now God will expedite your blessing he'll put quickness on your blessing I need somebody right now open your mouth and give God a crazy praise because you don't know like I know what the Lord has brought me from look at somebody say neighbor if you're going to see me where I was and see me right now you'll give God a praise for me because I should have been dead hallelujah hallelujah grab somebody say neighbor you ought to give God praise right now because it may be your last time I, I wish I had a church you don't need a drummer you don't need an organ all you need is a flashback you need somebody to let you know that God is able listen we're not going to go there tonight I, 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 listen I, I, I believe that we came all the way to Dayton to give God praise Come on, it's something when a real man give God praise tell somebody when a real man give God praise that's attractive hallelujah let everything that have breath praise God listen listen if you, if you want God to open a door you got to learn how to open your mouth the reason why you got a closed door because you got a closed mouth but when I open my mouth David said I will bless the Lord listen if you don't want to bless him I will if you don't want to shout I will if you don't want to run I will grab somebody tell him I will bless the Lord hallelujah God's been good to me look at somebody tell him God's been good to me look at him again tell him God's been good to me he's been so good to me I thought I was going to keep it to myself but I got to open my mouth and tell somebody it was nobody but God come on shake three hands and tell them nobody 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 but the Lord I should have been dead but nobody should be in jail but nobody should have had AIDS but nobody should be in a crazy house but nobody can't nobody do me like the Lord can you are right with me but you ain't nothing like the Lord if it had not been for the Lord on my side I wish I had somebody right now say I know that's right pastor God's been good hallelujah glory to God y'all keep messing with me you're gonna make me dance in this house my name is Vance and I approve this dance God's been good tell somebody I don't need a drum to dance I, I make up my own dance because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that it done for me look at your neighbor and say neighbor I don't need a prayer partner this season I need a praise partner I need somebody to know how to go in and touch God see when you open your mouth God says I got to show up right in the middle of your situation I tell you right now say God come on down come on down I need you I need a miracle I need a blessing I need a breakthrough I need something before the night is over Glory to God. Hey! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's been real good. Been real good. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Just grab your neighbor. See, he ready. He ready to go. Y'all not ready to go. And ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you ready to go? Well, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, let your feet get light right now. Because every time you pick them up and put them down, you're stepping on the devil's head. I'm not dancing for exercise. I already got the victory. And I'm going to dance before God do what he said. Hey! Glory to God. Hallelujah. They asked me around D.C., they say, Preacher, why you dance so much? Because God wakes me up so much. Why you shout so much? Because God been so good to me. Glory to God. Sometimes, well, listen, one day in your life, you ain't going to have nothing but a praise. Come on, say amen. After all the hell I've been through, I still got to praise. Glory to God. And you never praise God till you learn how to praise God by yourself. 
anybody ever been in a bathroom and the water running and you say, Lord, I thank you. You've been in the living room, you ain't hear no music, you ain't got no choir, you ain't got no praise team, you ain't got nobody. You just remember where you used to be and throw your head back and shout glory. I feel a little better now. I said, I feel a little better now. I feel like the old church. Glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, I feel better. Grab your neighbor and say, I feel better. So much better since I laid my burden down. Throw your hands up and shout hallelujah. Throw your head back and shout thank you, Jesus. Then shout, not the night devil, not the night devil. I'm not playing tonight. Playing tonight. Hallelujah. 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 If you haven't praised God yet, you're a trespasser. I said, if you haven't praised God yet, you're a trespasser. He said, into my car. Say, I'm not helping me here. When you walk in the door, you ought to walk in here with a praise in your mouth. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. But thanks be to God. See, you ain't got to have no trouble to shout. Glory to God. <laughs> That's right, man. Go ahead and get it. See, don't look at me. Don't wait for me to dance. I ain't got your blessing. You better, you better get your own praise. You better do what you got to do for God by yourself. Because God got to do it with you and you by yourself. <laughs> Look at him in now, and you on the online watching online streaming, and you saying why he shouting like that? He's supposed to be preaching. You don't know like I know what the Lord done for me. And if you sitting there in your living room on your phone, on your computer, you need to put that phone down and lift up your hand and tell God thank you because you should have been dead because you was a hoe chasing, free basing, cocaine sniffing, wine nipping, pill popping, weed chopping, cigarette sucking, pipe popping, low down, good for nothing. Coming to her back by no mother sinner on your way to hell. And if God changed your life and turned you around, you ought to dance like you know you already got the victory. Touch three people said, Hope will make you holler. Hope will make you holler. Hope will make you hot. Hey! 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 You can't wait for nobody to give your God glory. Because it may be your last time. I made up in my mind every time I walk into the house of God. The atmosphere don't have to be right because I am the thermostat. Come on, say amen. If it's cold in here, when I walk, it gets hot. I determine the climate of my environment. I don't need nobody to set nothing up for me. All I got to do is remember the goodness of the Lord. David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good he's everlasting he's eternal it's Adonai El Shaddai always was always is and always shall be undefeated unsurpassed unshamely out God and when I think about all the hell he brought me through And here it is, and I'm still here to talk about it. Look at somebody tell them, I'm still here to talk about it. 
And some of you can testify that you don't deserve that seat you're sitting in. And you don't deserve the air that you breathe. And you're not even worthy to put his name on your mouth. So when I praise God, when I worship God, it's a sign of his worthiness and my worthlessness. And I praise God with vigor. I give him my best. And everything I do, I give him my best. You ought to praise God so much you provoke your neighbor to jealousy. If your neighbor ain't jealous, you ain't praising God hard enough. Because the more you praise him, that's a sign how good he's been to you. If he's been that good to you, do you praise him a little? But if he's been that good, you praise him a whole lot. I wonder if God been good to anybody in here by the sign. You ought to show a sign that he's been good. You ought to wave your hands. You ought to blink your eyes. You ought to bob your head. You ought to pick up your feet. You ought to shout. You ought to, oh, you ought to dance. You ought to spin. You ought to leap. Somebody ought to leap for joy right there like you got it. God, I'm a leap for joy. Leap for it. Come on, leap for it. The child of the Lord is my strength. Y'all gonna make me preach in here already. Grab somebody, tell him the joy of the Lord. I've never seen a sad person leaping. You can't be depressed and leap the same time. Come on, say amen. Devil is a liar. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Come on, we're going to move. <laughs> I already preached. <laughs> I'm already done. <laughs> God says, when you open your mouth, I'm going to open that door. Grab that hand. Gra grab that hand. The door is shut because your mouth is glued. Well, I don't see it yet. It's called express faith. I'm expressing gratitude before I see it because I know he's going to do it. That's how I express my faith by praising God before I get the miracle. Your door's been shut because you got a closed mouth. But God says when you open your mouth on this next praise, that miracle you've been asking all year, going to drop into your spirit and it's going to manifest before the, I need somebody right now, open your mouth like you already got. He responds to your thank you. The reason why I'm still alive and making it and don't know why, because I'm a praiser. A praiser, a praiser, a praiser looks good with less. You miss it, you'll catch that on your way home. A praiser look good with less. I had more money and more property and more prestige, but I look better now and don't have nothing. You missed it. Praise make you look better with less. It puts something on you. It puts something on you. You ever want to destroy a yoke out of your life? You get by yourself and open your mouth. See, let me tell you something. One thing about God. God wants glory. And if he have to beat you down for you to lift them up. He will get it out of you some kind of way. The grace of God will bring you down so you can lift God up. But I'm a type of individual, God, you don't have to take me down to give you praise. Because even when you look like you're down, you still got the upper hand. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely privileged and honored to be a brother, a 
friend, little brother of this man of God that have come into my life through my relationship with my spiritual father, Bishop Monroe McLaughlin. If I would have never met my dad, I would have probably never met this brother in the way that I did. It was strategic. And a dude like me, I, I'm not really cliquish with, I've always been a type of loner type of dude. I stood off by myself. And people, they counted that for arrogance. It wasn't, it wasn't arrogance. I just was, I walked alone. And um, because I had problems with who I was and um, because I always felt like an outcast because what Pastor Brown said was I was different but I didn't know what I was different for. But as I grew in God, God says, you have been an outcast with men so that you can be an in-cast with me. But it was strategically planned by our dad. And every now and then he may glimpse in, I just want to say to Bishop Mark McGuire that you've come in my life at a strategic time. Somebody that I can, I can talk to I can let my hair down with and you allow me to be me you allow me to be crazy messed up still love me where I am I honor you you're a big brother to me when I came you were there and even showing me Pastor Brown then Bishop showing me even how to honor my spiritual father how to submit and to give and to sow and to pull on the anointing on his life man I honor you I respect you the work that you're doing here and, and, and listen, I know this is not for everybody, but everybody don't do this. This man invited me to my home. I'm not to his home. I'm not staying in the hotel. I'm sleeping in his bed. You missed that all together. Now, now I'm by myself. You know, I was like, <laughs> I'm straightening it up. I'm cleaning it up. He, he already cleaned it up. We love the same man, but we're not, you know. I'm like Brown. I don't even like you sitting beside me in a movie. Here's an extra seat. <laughs> but there's other room in his place. And I was like, man, I could stay right here. It's like, nah, bro. Go ahead up there. Everything that I have is yours. And um, I was able to get peaceful sleep, some time to myself, and some rest. And I'm, a, I'm eternally, eternally rather, grateful for your hospitality, your love for me. And man, I got your back. I see greatness in your life. You're prolific. You're brilliant. You're smart. You've been through some whole lot of hell. But all the hell that you've been through, I prophesy. Not a prophecy, but I prophesy. That God don't give you a double. That God give you a hundredfold. I prophesy. Because you're such a good man, a good leader. And sometimes we don't appreciate what we have. And familiarity hides you. It hides you. When you're familiar, it hides you. The president walk in here, everybody was staying. If we walk in here, you'd be like, oh, that's just the pastor. It hides you. It breathes content. But I tell you what, man. You have blessed my life. And I'm so eternally grateful. And to the Potter's House, Dayton International Ministries, you have an absolute jewel, a gift. Love him, treat him right, take care of him, sow into his life. Don't have him to want for nothing, no stress, anything. And God will bless you. God doesn't need your money, you do. And by you blessing the man of God, I'm just truly aware that he'll bless you. And to Pastor Brown, amazing. Amazing. Just absolutely amazing, man. I respect you. And we, we haven't kicked it as much as Bishop and I, but we're going we gonna to catch that up because you have so much to give back. And my spirit is so open. And I thank God that the anointing is on your life of, of, of um, authority order giving and you helped me so much tonight that 
it kind of messed me up even when I got to preach but thank God for your life and I'm appreciative to you and I want to do one more thing and, I'm, and we're going to move to the service I'm going to preach about 15 minutes we're going to have a party we're going to get something to eat we're going to go home I want to acknowledge my wife in her absence um, if she's watching hey boo boo and thank God for her and I, I, I just got to just thank God for for the people that I serve I pastor some of the most wonderful the best people in this entire planet I'm so grateful I want y'all just stand with just stand and just I give God praise if you just came through I'm so grateful I got them and um, I think I'm done with my introduction um, I love you guys I'm driving all the way down and I'm coming down here just to be a, a part of your Uncle Bishop and to be with your pastor. I'm so grateful to you. And um, I like that went crazy when Jody started running. He went back there and tried to get on the drums. Okay? <laughs> and I'm so thankful to um, all of you, um, LJ, and to the whole staff. You guys are just remarkable. Um, remarkable. I'm grateful. And, um, but I do have a treat. I have my daughters here uh, at his feet ministry. They, 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 are, uh, they, all, they have their particular ministry, but they're all members at the church, and they have their own particular ministry as well outside of the church. And I thought it was fitting for them to come. Um, I had a male dance group that was coming, but some things came up. But I want them to come and minister and be a blessing. And then I'm, I'm going to share what I believe that God has put on my heart and hopefully it can be an encouragement and a blessing to you um, for the latter days to come. All right, can you just give God praise for them as they prepare to come minister? And right after that, I will come and share. Some of you have been fighting that ground war for you. 
for a very long time. See. Sticking out your fists and fighting. you 
chapter 12 I'll be reading two verses the King James Version then I'll be reading 1st Chronicles chapter 9 verse 13 New International Version I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the people of God says, Amen. First Chronicles 9, 13, New International Version is on the screen. The priests who were heads of families numbered about 1,760. They were able, say able, able men responsible for ministering in the house of God. We may stand and we're going to pray, but tell somebody, I may not look like it to you, but from this topic, I'm able. Look at somebody, tell them I'm able. Spirit of the living God, help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seats. The grass withereth, the flower faded away, but the word of God shall stand forever. I am, I am able. I want to make an announcement tonight that God is still looking for able men to serve him. Have I got a witness here? Now there's a distinct difference between being able and being willing. There are many people that are, are willing to do a thing but they're not able. God is looking for equipped men who will put on the armor of God and then take up the sword of the spirit and fight the good fight. The Bible says to watch as well as pray. Can 10 people say amen? But, but what is the use of, of watching if you have no idea what to look for? It's interesting now to know that we are in, here it is, a spiritual warfare. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, put on, watch this, the whole armor of God, watch this, that ye may be stand against the wiles of the devil that word wiles now come from the greek word methodology methododia in which we get our word method it's the method of his operation so he begins paul in ephesians chapter 6 to list what this armor is he said loins you gird your loins with truth this this girdle that you put up around your waist that will keep things in place and keep things together the, 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 the girdle uh, many of us we, we know if you come from the old school my mother used to wear a girdle that will hold things in place that will keep things together and it's easier for the enemy to attack you when you don't have things together 
So he said, now, not only putting on the girdle, you must put on the breastplate of righteousness, which sort of guard the inner, the inner parts, the tender areas of, of the body, in particular the heart, because out of the heart comes the issues of life. And Jesus always dealt with the heart. Come on, say amen. It's the scrotum. It's the foundation out of which everything that I do is processed. Then he moved on with your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It deals with being grounded in God, knowing how to stand firm and not get plucked up by every wind and doctrine and cast out by the slight of men, but being able to stand strong in the heat of the battle. Then he said, above all, taking a shield of faith that will quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. When the enemy can't get you close, he'll get back far from you and start using people to get at you to make you lose your mind. He said, listen, I need you to have on a shield of faith. And then he said, listen, I want you to put on the, uh, the helmet of salvation. To, to guard your mind and that's where the battle is it's in, it's in the mind and so many of us now we are so messed up and I thank God for the teaching that Bishop been dealing with with joy because watch this your attitude watch this provokes your expectation and your expectation expectation rather induces your joy your mind it starts there your attitude as a man thinketh so is he then he said, listen, that's not enough because now you have to have an offensive weapon. Every other weapon was a defensive weapon. You must have the sword of the spirit take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Now listen, praise brings the presence of God, but don't nothing back the devil up but the word of God. Have I got a witness here? I'm a preacher. Y'all better help me here. The, the word of God. And a word is not a word until you speak it. Come on. There's a, there's a graphe word. There's a logos word. And there's a, a rhema word. A word that's tailored to your continuity of circumstance. Ah, you remember now when the devil tempted Jesus uh, after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He said, listen, since you are the, the son of God, turn these stones into loaves of bread. And you know what Jesus said. He said, it is written. Now, wait a minute. Just to know it's written is not enough. Jesus went and spoke what was written. Y'all not helping me here. A word is not a word until the word is spoken. You got to open your mouth. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. I need somebody to help me. That's proceeded. That's spoken out of the mouth of God. It's not enough to know the word. It's not enough to be in here. Because if it's just in here, it's just a thought. But when it comes out of your mouth, it's a rhema. It's a spoken word. A word right there for your circumstance. Can 10 people shout hallelujah? I feel my help coming now. So the devil now does not want to wound you he wants to kill you for the thief cometh now to steal kill and destroy now he does not just want to steal and leave it as that he wants to steal something but when he steal it he's going to do something with it he then wants to kill it but after he kills it he wants to turn around and destroy it because the word destroy means to make something unrecognizable Y'all not helping me here. That's how the devil gets in your marriage man of God because you allow him to come in and give him a foothold because you're not standing firm in the faith and allow the enemy to get both of you mad at each other so he can make you unrecognizable. They begin to say, you're not the same one I married when I married you because now you're unrecognizable. The marriage have been destroyed. The devil is not playing with you. Satan means to destroy you because, watch this, you represent man of God what he will never become and that is what he used to be now you'll catch that when you get home and that is a child of God and now that you are a child of God he is hell bent on destroying everything that looks like God to him if I got 10 people to shout hallelujah 
so we are we are not in a skirmish we are not in a scrimmage uh, we are in a winners take all a fight to the death and you can't fight until you get tired man of God you got to fight till you win talk back to me if you can the timid and the squeamish need not to enlist because it's dangerous it's, it's hard for it it yields no territory it's a win or lose take all um, you, 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 other, you, 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 you either in the fight or you're on the sideline yeah um, so God tonight is calling get this able men to take a stand on the front line and he told Gideon he said listen all that that are fe a fearful rather I want you to tell them jokers to go back home look at your neighbor tell them go hard or go home you got the wrong neighbor shake your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor go hard or go home the devil's not playing with you he comes to destroy everything that looks like God that's why you're going through more hell than God I got liver pills and you've been attacked the way you've been attacked and he's not attacking you because of where you are today he got a sneaky suspicion what God is about to do around the corner so that's why you got to stay prayed up and praised up and make sure you gird it up with truth so you can know how to back that devil up when he comes in like a flood you got to lift up a standing and say wait a minute devil I'm the priest of my house House. you're gonna stop right here because God has ordained for me to be who I am today I'm a preaching here till I get happy shout hallelujah somebody I'm so the night glory to God we're gonna get real in business today but what is an able man glory to God Bishop Let, let's take a look at um, what the scripture says about an able man it's on the screen the first one is they are men of availability um, they are men of availability availability now the greatest ability is availability that's the question for tonight are you available yeah um, it doesn't matter what your abilities are because if you're not available to God you're useless to God oh I can't hear nobody I was supposed to tell about 15 y'all a night that if you just show up glory to God God can work with what he has um, when I was in rehab they told me keep coming back um, I was like why I gotta keep coming back I ain't getting high no more cause they knew if I kept coming back my mind will come back and if I ever get my mind straight and in order it will produce an expectation and I will have joy for my journey um, grab your neighbor say neighbor you got to get your mind straight if you can ever show up we can work with you oh you're gonna see it in a minute Isaiah it's on the screen 6 8 says it like this I heard uh, glory to God the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I sin and who will go for us then said I here am I send me and the people of God say amen in other words here we are if you need somebody I'm right here yeah say no more I'm here it is available you got to see this because the Bible says when King Uzziah died I then also saw the Lord and he was high and he was lifted up oh my God and the, and the train filled the temple and he began to sing see angels singing holy 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 and the house was full of smoke and what was interesting to me in this particular text the Bible says the doorpost moved now I know you're slow church but I'm going to help you now if dead wood can move in the presence of God uh, y'all still slow how, how much more than his prized creation or the move some of y'all ain't moved all night but what is it going to take for you to move in the presence of God the Bible says that the doorposts move in the presence of God and then Isaiah said listen here when he saw the Lord I begin to see who I really am and the measure of a man is what he can take uh, y'all not helping me here he said I begin to see who I am see when you see God you begin to see yourself 
he said I'm unclean I'm jacked up I'm messed up and I'm around a whole lot of other folk that's messed up but if you need somebody yeah I'm right here for you I'm the man you need Isaiah responded to the call of God listen to him he says listen I'm not all that I should be but here I am everything I'm not everything I got use me right where I am I got some issues I'm messed up I'm going through hell right now but here I am use me I don't have everything together heaven I put the shoes together glory to God heaven pulled up on what I need to pull up but right now wherever whoever however you you want to use me God here I am take me make me mold me shake me to do what it is that you're called anybody like me you can testify you ain't got it all together you got some clinks some links but you're ready for God to do some things in your life by you in you through you that somebody get blessed by whatever he put in you you ought to throw your hands up right there say God use me in it anywhere you need to use me I know I'm not ready go to God but use me in how you see I believe what that we often look at men like Isaiah and look at Abraham and Moses and David and Joshua and Paul as these great men with tremendous abilities yeah but the truth is can I help somebody tonight um, the truth is they were men just like you and me uh, they were ordinary men watch this who made themselves available unto God and consequently God did some amazing things through their availability Oh, I can't hear nobody when I preach myself happy here. Now, notice now, I did not say ability. I said availability. Because when you're really anointed, watch this, it's not about you anyway. I got the wrong church here. Man, I wish I could stay right there and preach bishop. You see, it's not your ability that destroys the yoke. Because you can sing and because you can preach and because you can pray and you can administrate and you're a good businessman does not mean your call is solidified. Yeah. Uh, because often we see gifted folk with ability but no anointing. Yeah. Y'all quiet here. Um, Y'all not saying nothing. But can I help somebody? tonight and listen I want you to look at your neighbor and your neighbor if you don't shout on this one I don't want you to talk to them for the next 20 days amen and I want you to look at them because listen here you got to be around the right people Robert said this season you need to be around some different people so when I make this announcement if they don't shout if they don't leap and they don't jump listen I don't want you to talk to them to this time next year uh, your gift watch this will charm folk but your anointing will change folk I'm looking at you right now. If you ain't shout, I ain't come to, to charm you. I came to change you. I'm grab your neighbor, say neighbor. The devil wants to charm you, but he's looking for an able man that can change whatever. It gets in the way of God. Uh, so your ability, yeah, is charming. Yeah. Uh, but you being here helps be a change. Uh, um, I was supposed to tell somebody tonight, glory to God, that you got to be anointed to simply show up. Um, have I got a witness here? The devil didn't even want you to show up tonight. Uh, um, that's why Paul said in the text, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yeah. Holy and acceptable under God which is your standard mm, which is your reasonable service he said be not conform to this world that word world now in the Greek is cosmos it's the systems of men that, that, that thing that Brown talked about last night about bowing down to the systems be not conformed to the systems of men but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind <laughs> tell somebody you got to get that mind right you got to get that mind right we talk about refining you got to refine your mind you got to renovate your psychology uh, say amen somebody the way you think is wrapped up, uh, wrapped up the way you live um, let me back this thing up and roll it one more time for you for you can get this you have to see this because the greatest anointing is when God can take less and do more with it 
something let me shout to you here if you think you're qualified and, and you're competent and you resourceful and you think you're meat for the master's use God will never ever use you he will use somebody glory to God that feels unqualified and, and incompetent and, and unresourceful but yet get the job done if God ever says something to you and you realize that the anointing and the call is greater than the person that he has called and you're too afraid to tell somebody that you can do it you're too afraid to tell somebody because you're incompetent you ain't got it together you the man for the job because God will use somebody and get it done because you're not the person that you ought to be anyway so when it gets done you know it's not by might nor by power but by my Spirit says the Lord. Uh, so number one, you must be men of availability. Uh, number two, I got to get out of here. They are men of dependability. Say dependability. First Corinthians 4 2 says it like this. Moreover, it is required in stewards. Let's move that. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And ten people ought to say amen let's look at that in the message bible i know you didn't get excited maybe you can hear it here the requirements for a good guide are reliability and accurate knowledge tell somebody dependability uh, I, I i don't know about y'all tonight pastor brown but i get so irritated with undependable people see how quiet y'all got over there uh you just can't count on them and they waver in everything that they do uh, y'all not saying that but I'm going to preach myself happy uh, I, 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 I know, I know y'all not happy but I'm going to keep preaching because it feels good coming out uh, um, listen uh, 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 do you remember uh, in, in the parable of the talents but before I go there I, I like it uh, when someone says I'll be there and they are uh, am I right about it here I'm not only talking about church I'm talking about business owners when you get a, 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 a clan with you you like folk to do what they say they're going to do yeah uh huh I, I know uh, uh, I, I see you I, I, I like um, folk when they say I do it and they get it done and if you're not modeling the way you're in the way talk to me if you can um, I, I, I love folk that I can depend on and, and, and in the parable of the talents God gave one five gave one two and gave uh, uh, one one and in Matthew 25 one is not on the screen he says well done that good and faithful here it is servant you've been faithful over a few things now come up higher let me make your ruler of many enter into the joy of the Lord you see when God finds a dependable man he gives that man great responsibility have I got a witness here? Perhaps the reason you don't have much is because God can't trust you to be dependent upon. Oh, uh, 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 uh. The reason you don't have what you have because God can't trust you yet. Uh, because he's not going to give you something prematurely because too much too soon kills. You're going to mess you and them up. Come on, say amen. The reason why I don't have a thousand members, I can't handle them yet. So I work with what I have and be dependable and faithful unto that and wait on God to give me what he know I can handle. Come on, say amen. If God would give some of you some of the things that you asked for, you'll lose your mind. You'll be on the floor picking cotton, ready to lose your mind. But God knows he got to hold some things back until you mature enough to handle them. You can't be dependable with the five. How you going to get the 20? Able men have to be dependable. I, 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 I need to be able to rely on you what you say you need to follow up I can't stand uh, 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 folk who, who always lying about what they gonna do they got diabetes and, and try to make room for themselves to get a position but ready really not to handle the responsibility uh, I'm preaching so the Bible says 
to the one with the one talent God says in verse 26 thou wicked and slothful servant then he says in verse 28 he says therefore take the talent from him and give it unto which that have ten here it is I was supposed to tell somebody that God chastises the unfaithful and he blesses the faithful God blesses the dependable servant can I keep going so an able man is available dependable and in dealing with an able man thirdly they are men of mobility God never blesses a lazy man <laughs> look at Mark 16 1 it's on the screen Jesus said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and the people of God says Jesus said go but the favorite song of many is I shall not be moved what, what do the first two letters in God spell it's on the screen what, what do the first two letters in God spell you get that media go you see that right what is the first three letters in Satan it's on the screen Set. You see that? Oh. I just wanted you to just just I just I just want you to get there. If we want to do God's work, we have to get up and go. Uh, uh, Bishop Mark Maguire, he's not here, but I wish he was here, uh, has here get the tape, a global ministry. Talk back to me if you can. He has a global vision. And we cannot be global if we're not mobile. Mm. Uh, uh. In Acts 1 8, he says, After that, the Holy Ghost should come upon you. You should be my witnesses unto Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and the other post parts of the earth. We've been commanded to go, to be, to be mobile. And, and it's sometimes it's hard I, 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 tell, I tell people all the time I'd rather say whoa than giddy up uh, let, let me say it again I, I'd rather say whoa than giddy up I, I love folk that have initiative that will just jump out there and even if they're wrong they'll pay the price because at least they did something ever got a witness here tell your neighbor you got to be mobile I'm gone I'm out of here I see I bored you I done held you long enough and <laughs> able men are mobile men and fourthly they are men of stability uh, uh, tell somebody stability Galatians 5 1 King James Version says this stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage uh, I started out with spiritual warfare and, and, and people are, are falling all around us when you look at the news in Baltimore they are uh, in my state right now tripping and unless we stand fast we are going to fall right with them uh, so not only should we stand here it is but we need to stand in the right place I'm almost there uh, Samson um, was in the wrong place y'all hear when he lost his strength David was in the wrong place when he lusted after Bathsheba Jonah was in the wrong place and wound up in the belly of a great fish Peter was standing in the wrong place at the fire and he denied the Lord I've come to tell somebody tonight that you won't be able to stand for the Lord if you're in the wrong place tell somebody you got to get in the right place you need to be where you need to be at all times and you need to get there early you got to be available you got to be dependable you got to be mobile and you got to be stable James said a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways that's why we cannot lead our families and our wives because we are unstable and they get frustrated with us because they are designed 
to help us, but we don't have nothing to help them for. Come on, y'all. So we got to learn how to get in place and stay in place. I'm closing, y'all. So where should we stand, preacher? I'm, I'm glad you asked. Number one, stand fast. It's on the screen in the liberty where with Christ has made us free. You got to see this because our freedom is not our efforts or our works or our good deeds or our money or our attendance really our freedom is in the Lord Jesus Christ um, secondly we got to stand fast it's on the screen in the faith look at 1 Corinthians 6 13 New Living Translation the Bible says be on God stand firm in the faith be courageous and be strong um, high five your neighbor say neighbor be strong uh, look at them again you got the wrong neighbor they ain't excited wake them up and tell them be strong uh, you got to be strong because the devil is still tricky he's a liar he's a deceiver and now he's playing on our minds so thirdly it's on the screen I got the clothes we're going to shout and we're going to go home the Bible says stand in the Lord that's number three stand in the Lord shout that stand in the Lord. First Thessalonians is on the screen. 3 a New Living Translation. I thought I'd feed you with some word tonight. It gives us new life to know that you are standing firm in uh, the Lord. I come to tell you, you got to stand firm. You got to get your feet charred with the preparation of the gospel of peace and be like Paul and said, nothing shall move me. Come hell or high water, I shall not be moved. After all the hell I've been through, I'm not going to let this here mess my mind up I come to tell you the measure of a good man is let what lets him quit what makes him give up and what makes you give up small you're a small measured man I've come too far um, God been using me too much to, to get uprooted you need to learn how to bloom where you are planted I got to get out of here I see you're not excited but I'm going to close and I'm going to shout you got to learn how to stand and be firm in the Lord Ephesians 6 says this 10 13 it's on the screen finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness against spiritual weakness in high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day having done all to stand I'm closing y'all I bid you farewell I held you long enough but we need some able men God is looking for able men to stand up and to stand firm and to stand for him I need you to go to about three people and tell them I'm able um, yeah I need you to go to three people come on you that means you got to get up that's the problem we sing and standing on the promises but we're sitting on the premises I'm grab your neighbor tell them I'm able yeah. Um, the reason why I am able uh, because God is able. Um, have I got a witness? Hey, the Bible says that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power here it is that work it where on the inside of us. Tell somebody I got ableness on in the side and God will make things work out for my behalf um, I come to tell somebody that the Bible says I'm in my seat that we come to improve or to be refined um, you must stay on the wheels of God I'm closing now but I heard Jeremiah he said I went down to the potter's house and when I got to the potter's house I saw the potter and he had some clay in his hand have I got a witness here? And the clay that was in his hand, the Bible says it was marred. It was disfractured. It was dismantled. It was messed up. But I'm glad the text said that the potter did not throw the clay away. Have I got a witness in here today? The Bible said that he didn't throw it away. He made it again. Tell somebody, Lord, you need to try me one more time. I know I'm not what I should be. But I'm here and he used me for your glory. Grab 
grab somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm so glad that God has a plan for my life. Shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm able to do whatever God called me to do. Is there anybody here? You know that God called you to be who God called you to be. And you can't let nobody, you can't let no devil, you can't let your past hold you back. I said the reason why I'm able, because God is able. Shout hallelujah. I need you to grab somebody and tell your neighbor, after all I've been through, I'm still able. Shout hallelujah. Able to open up door. Able to heal the sick. Able to raise the dead. Shake somebody good and say, neighbor, the Lord is using you right now. Throw your hands up. Open your mouth and tell that devil, you should have killed me. While I was down, but tonight I'm getting up because I'm making myself available. I'm making myself dependable. I'm making myself mobile. I'm going to march into the world. I'm a priest of gospel. Shout hallelujah. And what makes me mobile? We've been given treasure in this earthly desert that the excellency of the power be of God and not of us. So I come to tell you the reason why I got power because Friday shout yeah they hung them high can I preach the gospel they stretched them wide he dropped his head didn't he die didn't he die he died shout yeah but early early oh early Sunday morning he got up shout he got up with all power shout he yeah, yeah, ah, 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 finish able men are available they're dependable man they're mobile and they're stable listen refining means to improve when Jeremiah went to the potter's house the potter was improving only way you can get improved you got to come to the potter's house and even when you get out of the wheel, stay on the wheels. See, one thing about clay, it goes through a process even before it gets on the wheel. Because clay sometimes have lumps and the part I have to take a pliable thing, a mallet and get all the bumps out of it, smooth the bubbles, and then go through another six months process. You got to go through a process even before you get on the wheel. There's no way in the world you can improve and people got to beg you to show up. <laughs> Sometimes I know it's oppressed. You got to be even anointed to show up because the devil will have you do all kinds of stuff. They say, well, I, I can't get nothing. You just got to be consistent and just keep coming. Just show up. Just be in the place at the right time. When I come up and listen, let me tell y'all something. When I come up in ministry, before I submitted to my spiritual dad, Bishop Vaughn, I was in a previous church. And see, when God really saved you, you really get sold out for God. My old pastor didn't have to tell me when to come. I just wanted to be there. I mean, if he's in the office, I want to be in the office. Wherever he is, I wanted it so bad because I respect it. When you don't show up, it's a disrespect to who you call your father 
it's like week after week this man come and he I watches him preach I, that's all I do I avail I'm available I avail myself to preaching because that's what I'm in because I always want to become a better man of God and when you're a man of God take time and, and, and bake bread take time he don't give you no canned goods he, he prepares and then when he prepares and lays it out on the table and the kids don't come then he got to put them in the refrigerator for leftovers because he know you need a particular nutrient we need a rule like I had a rule when the lights off in the street you need to come in the house you need a curfew when it's time to come in the house you need to be in the house on time available you cannot get worked on unless you hear and the only way you can back the devil up man of God you got to have a word in your spirit to have enough faith to believe and faith comes by hearing how can they hear there's no preacher how can they preach it should be sent you got to show up Paul said listen present your bodies when you put things before God and then turn around and want God to put you before stuff can't do it I want to pray for you and I'm gone being available changed my life I may not have everything that I, that I desire to have, but I'm at the best place in my life as a man, listen, that I've ever been as a man, not a preacher, not a pastor, but as a man, as an integral man. Because it's not about how gifted you are. It's about how available. When you're available, God will put something on your life that won't charm people and that man of God have it listen what I want to do I want to give and I'm speaking to those that are watching by way of live streaming that are watching that day I want you to sow a seed I want you to make your, yourself available by sowing a seed into the ministry you can go on the website right there where you are click, click the giving button and just sow right there where you are so right there where you are and all of us we're going to sow into this anointing tonight I'm not putting no number on it I'm not going to do that I'm going to sow and I'm gone I'm done if you need any more from me you inbox me I'm through I said what God says and I'm shutting up but I want us to give I want us to give our very best to this 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 anointing I'm able I'm able to do what God called me to do. If you need somebody, Lord, here I am. Send me. And when, and when you're ready, you can just come up and give. Just, just come up and give. Come up and give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give to the anointing. Give. I'm available. I'm, I'm dependable. I'm moldable. Thank you, man of God. May God bless you all the days of your life. I'll receive it. I'll receive it. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you for those that are giving that's online right now. Thank you for sowing that seed. This is not a gimmick. We're not about games and gimmicks. We are real with Jesus. That seed will bless your life. This is an awesome ministry to sow in. If you're watching and you were blessed, please sow that seed right now. Just go to the link and click it right now. We will see your, your seed online. And we will pray for you. That God will open up avenues to bless you. Lastly, before I close, I, wanna, I want every man to come. And I want Pastor Brown. And, and, and if Bishop, if you could, just want to, I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave it open like this. The Lord just spoke to me. We're not going to do anything else. We just want every man to come to this altar. And these men of God are going, going to pray to seal what was been said. Because the enemy, the minute you leave, he was talking about that the night. That the minute we leave here, you forget because of the cares of the world. And choke that word up. And you won't be available Sunday when Sunday comes. 
as, as, the, as the pastors and bishop will come um, I'm going to turn it over to, to them we just want to pray and I, I, if it's okay while you pray I just want to touch a couple of them just pray for them is that okay with you and um, um, I, I guess me and Pastor Brown we can just, just touch some of them is that okay bishop and while bishop pray and then we're going to close that's all we just want to just impart some things in, into our men that we can have because there's a amount of glory that's in you that's not really in me and there's amount of glory that's in me that's not in you but it, when we come together in covenant relationship the glory of God comes and imparting in both of us so that we can have what we need to have because it's tough out here am I right about it as the man of God was speaking I believe that God put a word in my spirit about pride and so we want to break the spirit of pride available dependable mobile and stable men are teachable men that we don't get to a point where we've got enough of God or we, we think we're beyond being fathered and moving beyond the place that we're in where we're so busy doing what we think God wants us to do that we're not able to sit at the feet of the people that God has called us to. The Bible and our bishop teaches us that every man should have a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy. But there are too many men trying to have Barnabas and Timothys before they ever find their Paul. And so God, I pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we would inhale your spirit of liberty. That every place in our life that has caused us to be bound, to be shackled, to be entangled, to be entrapped that your spirit of liberty would come and free the spirit of praise and the spirit of worship that is on the inside of us that it would release something that we didn't even know that we had and God that it would come and expel the spirit of pride in every place pride that makes us hide our deficiencies pride that tells us that we're better than we are pride that says to us that we don't need from anyone else pride that makes us miss the opportunity to be poured into pride that causes us to disclose a spirit of arrogancy that says there is no impartation needed but that we would be free God to receive of you God we pray over every man that's at this altar those things that were spoken availability dependability mobility and stability God that we would be able men apt to teach others also father that we would be models in our home on our jobs in our schools in the community neighborhoods extended family god that we would allow you to have free course and preeminence in our lives god that there would be nothing that would hold us back from seeking you with our whole heart that we would desire you that we would long after you that we would hunger for you more than our necessary food that it would be your word and your spirit that would move us from faith to faith and from glory to glory fresh hope fresh inspiration fresh revelation a new perspective a renovation of our psychos God that we would think differently and God that a view that is in our head that God it would get in our heart that we would be one with your spirit we love you sir we need you sir 
here we are send us undone wrecked marred ruined in some places but in your hand make us another vessel that seems right to you and then God send us into that place we love you sir help us to be men of covenant consecrated men sacrificial lives we bring to you right now thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven we love and honor you in Jesus name amen come on give God some praise for the shift and the change hallelujah hallelujah father for every woman that's in this house that did not come to this altar because it was a call for men at that moment God that same spirit of availability that same spirit of dependability and mobility and stability we pray upon their lives God for every wife God that she would be that help meet God not just a mate but a help meet that she would celebrate the man of God that she would be light for the man of God and that she would be discerner of the evil that comes against the man of God God that she would be in that proper place and for every single woman in this house that they would desire you more than a husband and that you would prepare them for the times to come. God, we just thank you for as kingdom children. You have blessed us immensely. There's no words that can explain what we've received this week. And tonight, we just say thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And we have expectation because we know what you've already done in our lives. Your resume with us is impeccable. And we thank and we love you so much for just being our God and our Father. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the brethren and the body of Christ. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. We love and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. God is worthy. Can we give God some praise for Pastor Vance Olds from Liberty House International Ministries. He preached his heart out. He preached his heart out. I am thankful for the man of God. That is my friend. And I am thankful uh, at his feet ministries. Can somebody just give God some praise for at his feet ministries. They were just awesome. We'll figure out a way to help finance your trip to come back for the night of dance, night of mind, night of worship. We got to have you back here. And so we'll, we'll, we will figure that out. Amen. Because that was just awesome. And we thank God. I know the man of God said he didn't need an atmosphere setter, but you show sure help set an atmosphere. Amen. And so we thank you. Thankful. We're thankful for Brother Terry. We're thankful for this praise team that has labored all week long and we thank God for you but listen men and, and our local men and we know some guys had to work tonight and do some things and a whole lot of folk got stuff going on on Friday nights remind everybody about tomorrow morning we're going to meet in here at 10 a.m. we're going to worship we're going to worship and we're going to worship we're going to hear a word that is brief, but we're going to hear a word that is powerful. And really, whatever God does, Elder, you let God use you. And uh, we're excited and we're looking forward to what the Lord says. And then we're going to go downstairs and we're going to eat. Amen. And, uh, and then we're just going to fellowship a little bit and just talk and be poured out upon by some great men of God who have some great things to share about this journey. Amen. Somebody say the journey. 
the journey and no matter where you are in life it's a journey and sometimes it's going real bad and we feel hopeless but it's a journey there's more to come sometimes it's going real good and we forget God but we have to remember it's a journey and the devil leaves us alone for a season and so I'm thankful so tonight um, we got we're gonna get you guys somewhere to eat amen and uh, try to make sure you're right. I'm thankful for you. I love you. Pastor Brown on last night. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Pastor Art in his absence. We thank God for him for Wednesday night. And uh, it's just been a great time. It's been a great three days. Amen. And uh, so we're thankful. So, Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We honor you. You have been great to us. So much better than we deserve. These three nights have been wonderful. Bless the men on tomorrow as we come to worship and hear a word of impartation and eat and fellowship together and then be blessed beyond measure for those from the dmv that have to hit the road in the morning tonight or whenever that time is we just pray your traveling mercies upon them and uh, god we just lift up something special for baltimore and philadelphia and other places that are strained by injustice and frustration and years of uh, just feeling ostracized and oppressed God we know that there's a remnant everywhere that is praying and believing you we know you're a God of justice and equity and so for those that are a part of those systems that have frustrated us who love your name who are called for your purpose cause them to rise up and stand up in the midst of it and speak truth to power right there in their faces but God, we pray for peace and calm amongst those that are angry and hurt and in despair. We pray for the Gray family. We pray for the Martin family. We pray for all the families across this nation where something tragic has taken place at the hands of others. We love you so much. We know one thing for sure. Regardless of the commissioners, the mayors, the governors, the president, those uh, at state attorney's office, your word says there's yet one that sits on the throne. And so we are thankful and submitted to you, sir. Do with us, do with this nation as you see fit. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Prophet King, we see you in the house. God bless you, sir. We love you. We thank God for you. Pastor Hutchison in the back, we thank God for you. We